Hey guys, just a warning prior before you watch the video and the tutorial. Uh, I take no responsibility for any failed attempts to replicate this device. It works. I know it works. It's been tested on the server. It works, works everywhere. Uh, but it's a complex device, so don't rush it. Um, I try to go really slow and yeah, make sure you, you know, double check everything. Anyways, thanks. Good luck. Bye bye. <laughs> Hey guys, Cube Hamster here with a new video. I, uh, today I want to do the numpad pin tutorial. So uh, yeah, before we get started, one thing that's important though is 1.4.5 somehow made this design orientational dependent. Um, so you have to either face it towards west or towards east. And I can show you why. Uh, it has to do with the torch towers. And I don't know, it's never been this bad, but for some reason, um, in 1.4.5, uh, a four tick pulse, I'm creating a four tick pulse here, just completely vanishes. So four tick, two tick, one tick, and then it's just gone. God knows why, I have no idea why. But uh, yeah, I suggest we just get started. Let's go. Okay, once you've figured out where you want your numpad, you can build it like this. I'm using Obsidian, it's completely unnecessary, but uh, in the OCD pack, it looks sort of cool. Um, so basically just the nine numbers with the zero at the bottom, just like a phone. And then on the other side, we're gonna already sort of hook up some of the outputs. And I'll just show you where we are tapping off all the button signals. And then after that, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll work on the delay. So this button is actually hooked up to the redstone there. There's gonna be, you know, um, sort of an out outlining for the button panel, so you won't actually see that. Then there's two torches there and three torches on top. Okay, now the numpad uh, combo lock actually uses a sort of a red coder or it, it, it's gonna decode the, the redstone travel distance. Uh, so before we can decode it, we actually have to sort of encode it and uh, it's gonna split it into two different wires. Um, and this is just the, the first one. You get a one tick repeater there block and then redstone dust. Now you can see this repeater leads there, there, uh, this one there, this one there. So this is like the four buttons that are hooked up now. And the other six are gonna be hooked up um, in a different way, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, now we're gonna hook up these two uh, buttons. So the torches you see there, what you do is you place two torches there. Then we actually have to isolate that signal so it doesn't cross connect. You'll get two redstone dust there. As you can see, they immediately hook up to the, um, the torches. Then you're gonna get a um, upside down half slab there, block there so that the signal can actually travel up like that. And then from the bottom here, we are gonna send this signal into a torch tower. like so, which will hook up to the dust there. So then we hooked up the next three uh, buttons. Now the only thing to do is hook up the top three buttons and we do that by placing blocks there, torches, then a block there with the repeater, that's the first one. Then the middle one goes one higher and we get the repeater there and the last one goes like so. And now each uh, each input, like each space of wire has an output hooked up to it, which is what, uh, um, what the red coder is all about. And this again leads into, um, yeah, into an area where we're gonna decode these, uh, these different signals. So now we will start to bring the, uh, the different inputs to an area where we can start decoding. And um, I'm gonna start with the, f uh, the, the, the bottom four inputs. That's like the four repeaters you see here. And it's gonna be a bit weird. And the reason it's gonna be a bit weird is because I, I need to, yeah, I'm gonna use the fact that redstone only travels 15 blocks uh, to my advantage. But at the same time, that sort of means that I have to 
make it travel a bit of a bit a bit of a weird route to get it to go exactly the distance I want it to go. And as you can see, I'm sort of cross looking at the one uh, next to me. And the reason for that is that I just want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes, which would be stupid. Um, so we have looped and I can, I'm using upside down half slaps here because uh, it doesn't block the signal as most of you guys know already. And I can actually use that here as well. Uh, now the bottom row is going to be for the first, uh, the first input for the pin. And this is going to be the second. And if we go up once again, and even more up, we'll be able to split it up once more, like so. And we will have our four uh, input lines on the left side, and then we'll, we'll, we'll need uh, four on the other side as well. So uh, let's continue there. Okay, now for the other six inputs, again, it's going to be a, a bit weird um, because I have to sort of manipulate the, uh, the length of the redstone. Um, so we, oh, we're going to go down, then we're going to place a block there, a block there. And now I see a mistake with the blue wiring. We actually need to cut that off because I want the signal to travel all the way like so. Then we go down. As you can see, I'm sort of peeking at the other side. Uh, again, that's just to make sure I don't make any stupid mistakes. So if we go down like that, and we will actually already have the first input line that is going to go all the way there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six inputs. Then we're going to go um, up like that around the corner that's the other six inputs for the second input of the pin um, then we are going to get a upside down half slap here to make it go towards the third input and fourth input we're going to go like that and once again using half slaps now officially the best block in the game better than glowstone because you can actually place repeaters on top split it up like that and we will have input like all the four pin inputs on top of each other on the opposite side so we get a, a nice little gap here um, so yeah and uh, then next up we are going to continue with the uh, yeah the decoding before we can start decoding, we need uh, input lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to place some white, block, white wall blocks there. Um, that's for the first input of the pin, the second input of the pin, the third, and then finally the fourth. And what you can do now is you can place redstone dust on top, like so. And after we've done that, I'm already, I mean, I already showed this in a separate video, but um, just to check that everything works, I'm actually already going to make a pin. And I'm going to make a very easy to remember pin using levers. Uh, the first input is going to be number two. And as you can see, the redstone only travels to a certain distance. Now, what you want to do, um, where the redstone does uh, activated ends you want to put a torch and the one after that you want to put a repeater and I'll show you why because what's going to happen now whenever I say I activate this one then it's actually going to travel too far activating the repeater and activating the line and the one after that or this one um, this one actually doesn't go far enough, which means that the, the redstone torch is going to stay activated, which will activate the line. And basically, whenever you enter a correct number, this line has to turn off. And it can only turn off when this redstone dust is on and this redstone dust, uh, redstone dust is off. So that's using like the, the signal travel distance. Just change the time to something better. Um, <laughs> Now, the next number I want to do is number five. 
so now it goes all the way here. Again, we place a torch, and then the one after that, we place a repeater. And then number eight. And I apparently broke some redstone dust there by accident. Um, so now we're on the other side. Similar deal though, all you do is you place a torch and the one after that you do a repeater. And then f the final number, which is gonna be number zero. Torch and then a repeater. And if you wanna prevent people from um, spamming, it's also quite simple. What you do is you go to the opposite um, opposite input line, and on the first, like the first redstone dust you come across, you put a repeater. This is actually the first one. You put a repeater, and again, on this one on the other side, repeater there. Now this might not actually be necessary, but what happens is when people are gonna spam the buttons, these repeaters are gonna activate, blocking this line from turning off. That's basically all it does. Um, so the first input here would be like so. This is actually not really necessary. And on the top one, again on this side, we get one there. So there we go. Now we also added some spam protection. And I can now get rid of the levers and I know the combination. It's just going to be 2580. There we go. I see I made one little mistake, and that is um, I was using a solid block here. And I mean, that's gonna burn out the torch. So instead of that, you actually have to use a upside down half slab. So whenever you get a repeater above a torch, make sure you use an upside down half slab. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little mistake I found later. Um, then next up, uh, we, we got all these nice white lines now, which is going to be uh, different inputs from the different pins. Like this is the first number, second, third, and fourth. And we actually want to take this and, um, yeah, we are going to slowly move this towards the input of the RS Knowledge Array. And an RS Knowledge Array is nothing else than sort of sequential memory. And by sequential memory, I mean that it can only store something in memory when uh, when the previous uh, memory storage has has something stored in it. So it sort of counts up. You could, you could say it's sort of a counter in a way. Um, so we go like that. These are eventually gonna lead us, or lead into the RS Knowledge Array. Now we've got a bunch of repeaters here. That's just to make sure that the signal doesn't travel back. Uh, the top one has to be on four ticks, one below, and three ticks, two ticks, one tick. And yeah, this is going to be uh, our four input lines into the RS Knowledge Array. Now, next up, we are going to talk about the orange circuit. And let me explain you what the orange circuit does. Basically, regardless of what button you press, it's going to send a a signal to do two different things. First one is resetting the entire RS Knowledge Array, just resetting everything. And the second thing that this signal is meant to do is create an opening to actually get an input in the RS Knowledge Array. So this is both to reset and read uh, at the same time. Um, but yeah, let's just start with that. So I got basically this repeater hooked up to the four inputs here. And then the other one is hooked up to the other four inputs. So regardless what you press, you're gonna get a signal. Okay, now the first thing I said that I wanted this signal to do is it has to um, send a pulse into the reset, which will reset the entire RS Knowledge Array. And I'm using a piston pulser or monostable circuit, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm using a lot of two tick delay repeaters. And the reason for that is that uh, if I were to use, uh, you know, three tick, then it's actually gonna increase the length of the pulse, which is not what I want. And this is gonna go around the corner like so, just with normal redstone dust into a block with a two tick repeater. And I'm gonna stop there for a moment because 
um, yeah, something interesting is going to happen because obviously uh, we don't want it to always reset the RS knowledge array. We only want it to reset the RS knowledge array when the wrong number has been uh, input in the device. Um, so this is what you get so far. And then we're going to move towards the other signal. Now, the other signal is, like I said, a signal meant to read or to allow input to go into the RS knowledge array. And it actually has to sort of be a long pulse. So I'm going to lengthen the pulse. Uh, using a system I really like to use a lot, which is um, blocks with repeaters in between next to a redstone line. Um, so now I'm going to get a 10 tick pulse from the button because the buttons give 10 ticks. That's going to, you know, activate the redstone here, which will stay activated longer because of the four tick delay, which will be activated even longer because of this four tick delay. And I can just send this all the way over here into a block, and this, this just to make sure that there's no cross-connecting wires, into a one tick delay repeater, and this will eventually lead into the brown circuit that you see there, which is used to allow input to be read from the, uh, yeah, from the white lines. There we go, so much for the orange circuit. Now, like I already said, you obviously don't want it to, you know, reset all the latches, like all the memory in the pin, uh, whenever you press a button. It has to only reset when you press the wrong button. And um, seeing as this is going to be the reset pulse, uh, I'm going to have a block here with a sticky piston on top. Oh, I should not have done that. With a sticky piston on top. And what I want is whenever... Um, Whenever a signal is correct, I want it to give, uh, yeah, sort of a pulse, extend it to block off the reset pulse. And the way I can do that is I can actually read um, some inputs from the white circuit. And this is going to be quite a complicated uh, mess of wire because there wasn't really a lot of space, but I'm just going to start off by uh, these. As you can see that this torch is already directly hooked up to the piston. So now whenever, you know, there's a correct signal, so that means that this red redstone is turned off, it's going to extend the pulse, blocking off the reset signal from resetting the entire uh, RS knowledge array. But it's going to get a bit more complicated than that. Okay, now seeing as the pulse that we, we will eventually get from the uh, from the white line is actually going to be a bit short. We have to have another input from the same line uh, to increase the length a bit. And we're going to do that by having a torch there with a four tick delay repeater. And above here, it's going to be sort of a similar deal. Oh, another four tick delay repeater. And we'll just have a block with redstone on top, like so. Then the one above that will have redstone just go down like that. Well, let's just start off with this. So this is like the first two lines are now hooked up. And then the first one on the third line. Then the, uh, yeah, the sort of longer delay on the third line is going to be like so. We will have a four tick delay repeater which will just send the signal down on top of the other ones. And then above that, now it might become a bit messy, but we'll see. We're going to have another four tick delay repeater, like so. And let's see how we're going to do this. There we go. So that's all the yeah, reset prevention lines, let's just call it that, uh, hooked up to the piston, which will block off the reset signal. Okay, next up, I actually want to work towards the, um, yeah, the RS knowledge array. And I'll do that by starting off with the reset line we just created, which is going to be your standard uh, torch tower, which is actually also the reason why this thing doesn't work in the uh, north-south direction because redstone is just completely, yeah, fucked up <laughs> like that. Um, like so. 
and you can actually put you have to put a block on top there. This is going to reset the bottom three latches. We'll just start off with that. And then next up, I mean, we, we have the pulse for the reset. Now we're going to hook up the pulse for the read line, um, which again will be a fantastic torch tower <laughs> going up like that. Torch towers for the win. And what we can already do now is hook up the pistons, which allow uh, reading of the RS knowledge array, like so. Now we're going to start with the uh, yeah the real circuit for the RS knowledge array, or still maybe somewhat of the input, which is going to be the magenta circuit. And what you want to do is you want to um, drop some torches on the side here. There's already two down there, that, that sort of double function. And then next to those torches, like so, we are going to put the inputs into the uh, Ars Null Array. So that's the fourth one, third one. Because when, when these pistons are retracted, I'll be able to send a signal through them, which will go into the, into the, the memory storage, into the Ars Null Edges. And then finally down here, like so. And then on the other side of these, we're going to put a four tick delay, delay repeater on all of them. Or no, no, let's just do the, the bottom three first. Um, and these signals are actually going to go around the corner. like so with um, yeah I guess this not too important in ticks uh, but there has to be repeaters here just to make sure that there's no cross connection with the brown uh, with the brown circuit and this is again hooked up into blocks like so and it is these actual lines that are hooked up to the uh, RS knowledge array. And what we'll get is a torch block, and then another torch, and then another block. And this is where the sequential comes into play. Um, there's a torch on the side here, which will always keep this piston prevent, uh, extended. And as long as that piston is extended, no input can come from the, the second number. And that's very important because um, this is where I'll, I'll actually have the uh, RS null edge. And we'll have redstone dust here, then a block there, a torch, and a one tick delay repeater. And this is an RS null edge, this, this little loop here, because whenever I um, press the button here, so this block activates, it will be on. And whenever I reset it, and I can reset it by activating this dust which will be reset from the reset line, the torch you see below there. Um, we'll activate it and we'll turn off the RS null edge. And whenever um, the RS null edge is activated, this torch will turn on, which will mean that, um, let's see, can I do that manually? Yeah, I guess so. Which means that, let me just turn on the read signal permanently. Um, so normally, this piston is extended, can't have any input, and whenever the first latch is activated, it retracts, allowing for uh, input to come through on the second line. So that's why it's sequential, and you can only do uh, one input after the other. So now it's just a matter of hooking up the other uh, RS null latches. It's a similar deal. So again, we'll get you know torch and lever. This one activates. Then we'll have redstone dust here going into a block. It's no cross connections. Then torch there, one tick delay repeater. And whenever, you know, this one is activated and the next one gets its input, 
this one will retract, allowing for the one after that to also receive its input. So this will then be hooked up to the, the top piston next to the reset line into another block with a torch. And we have our final arsenal latch, which with a button press will activate, allowing for the last and final number to get inputted from the pin. So there, that's how the sequential memory or the arsenal latch array works. Now, I suggest we actually um, test, I remove the, uh, the, read, the read line, test if it actually resets and if it actually reads the first uh, three inputs. So any button now that's wrong because the pin is 2580. So this one should already reset the whole thing. There we go. And now this should activate the first pin and pressing it again should reset it. Um, no, okay, that's a good point. One very important thing, to prevent, uh, to prevent the same input from being input twice, we have a, a tiny but freaking awesome circuit, which is the red circuit, which is basically one block with a torch and redstone dust. And Whenever um, one of these is activated, you know, extended and stays extended, it's gonna um, it's gonna overwrite the input. So it's gonna overwrite the the pink circuit, which allows for a reset signal to get sent in. So just tiny, such a tiny uh, contribution, the red circuit, but very important. So now, when I press two, the white circuit can't turn off which sends the resets, should send the reset signal to reset the whole thing. Why didn't it though? Now I'm curious. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very important. Um, another thing, I'm, I'm just adding stuff now. Um, we actually need torches here. <laughs> um, so that when this thing is activated, uh, this torch will turn on keeping the first piston extended. Same goes for the one above that. This one's off, so this one will retract regardless of what happened. And that, so this, there is really no air blocks in the arsenal no ledge array. <laughs> so again, let's press number two, and now it should reset. There we go. And if we press it again, it should activate again. And if we press number five now, it should activate the next ledge. And then number eight for the top one. And the last one we haven't hooked up yet, but that's what we are gonna do now, which is, uh, yeah, the light blue circuit, the final circuit, or sort of the final latch. Okay, the light blue circuit. I just noticed that we uh, still can add another uh, red circuit here for the last one, for the four latches. Um, now then we'll get a, uh, yeah, sort of interesting circuit. And the reason that this is different than, you know, why the reason I changed this in comparison to the other stuff is because of um, space, pretty much. I wanted to make it as small as possible. And um, yeah, to be able to get an output, uh, I had to do some, you know, tinkering weird stuff to make it work. Um, so this, that's just what this is uh, really. Just a matter of, uh, of space. So we'll get uh, a signal to go around the corner like so. And then a half slap there. Block there. And now we need a one tick. So this one too. And then we'll have a sticky piston like so. That's basically, we're gonna get a signal and I have to turn that into a one tick pulse because it's actually hooked up to a uh, yeah, T flip flop piston. So just a piston dropping a block further ahead. And then behind that, we have a slap that's just to prevent this piston from being derpy and activating my redstone. We go around the corner like so with a one tick pulse. So I need another repeater. There we go. Then a block. 
then redstone dust and then I can have my piston like so and we'll have a um, what do you call it we have a torch there and now when I input let me just see yeah it's still sequential by the way because that torch is basically preventing any input from getting into the last latch so now technically when I input the final number it should drop the block there no let's see what did I do wrong I messed up the ticks this should actually also be a, a tick like that so it didn't reset because it was still the right number but it didn't drop the block and now it should there we go so that that's gonna you know be the output that you'll wire up to uh, whatever you want but there's a bit more complicated and the reason for that is um, because of the reset line which will which will add in a moment but we're just gonna bring this signal all the way over there it's a bit, oh redstone dust into a torch and there we go so now it's activated and let's just reset the whole thing by pressing oh no the same number again why not there we go um, yeah oh yeah very important um, to prevent the same number from getting uh, fired again what you want to do is you want to have a repeater there and what will happen is when it activates so let's activate it again um, this repeater is gonna uh, keep the top piston extended regardless of what happens um, so that's sort of the yeah the fail safe that we have there like and the other ones we had torches here we have a repeater and now if I enter the same number again it should reset Yeah, it resets. Um, however, it didn't reset the top one because we still haven't added the last and final uh, reset line, which we'll do now. Because the reset uh, line for the, uh, the top latch has to come again from the, obviously, the reset signal. This is just the, the block hooked up to the piston, um, but it has to take sort of a, uh, yeah, somewhat of a uh, detour. Um, we're gonna actually change this block for, I don't know, I guess a red block and then with a repeater on top and then yeah, I don't think there needs to be a block there because the bottom input should always, yeah, that's fine. Then uh, this is the pink circuit actually. So <laughs> I'm peeking now, but four tick delay then we're gonna get a massive torch tower I love those and no, I not really actually hate those <laughs> oh there we go that's how I solved it um, so this is now the red the red circuit so instead of having a torch underneath I'm just hooking it up with repeater like so so I did actually wire it up but I, I had to improvise a bit um, torch tower up all the way like so then one tick delay repeater into this just <laughs> this, wiring this up again is so weird <laughs> and this will eventually go into this piston and basically what's happening what's going to happen now is regardless of what I press it's going to send a signal into the reset line which will activate that piston and that would actually be a really bad thing if it wasn't for the fact that I have a black circuit to prevent uh, it from giving an output. So let me just show you again. So when I press a button, this torch is going to turn off for a very short time, uh, which is bad, but I can fix that. Because if, um, if this, this redstone is activated, but is hooked up to a four tick delay repeater that extends the pulse and that is then hooked up to you know an output 
then we will finally have our output because what's going to happen now is if I add uh, enter a bad number, uh, the, the, the pulse is going to be too short to deactivate this repeater. So now only when I activate, you know, when I press the right um, inputs, so the first one, and the second one, can I see it? There we go. Third one, and then finally the last one, will it give an output? Whew. Okay, guys, I I did my best. This tutorial took forever to record just because it's such a complex device. I'm glad I did it though, and I really hope you guys um, enjoy it and that you uh, have, don't have any trouble with all the wiring and stuff. And yeah, <laughs> please, if you built this using the tutorial, um, give your feedback in the description. If it works, you got it working, I, I, I love to hear it, I'd love to hear it, so please post that sort of stuff in the comments because, yeah, I guess that's one of the main reasons I do this, that motivates me to do more tutorials. So if you build this, get it working, post, <laughs> post your feedback and stuff. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, like always, leave a like if this helped you out. And yeah, I'll... Uh, See you guys on the server or else I'll see you later. Bye bye.